All right, Sketchpad Podcast, we back. So today we're going to be talking about the issue that Dame Dash and Irv Gotti has with each other. We're going to watch a little bit of this interview with Dame Dash, I believe. That's who they're talking to, right? Yeah, so mm-hmm. we'll be back. Let's go. Let's go. Who raised you? Crazy. Oh my god. Uh, children are too young to make those type of choices for themselves. You know, that's why they have parents. Oh, eat each other. What? Yo, I can't, can't understand it neither. I'm just ahead of it. Back. I also too, man, we almost reached ten thousand subscribers. We almost there. We got about about I believe sixty more subscribers. So please I think believe the next video that drops, we're gonna be over ten thousand. So proud of us. A couple of weeks ago, maybe two, three months ago, we was at fifty subscribers. Now we at ten thousand. We're trying to reach a million. Let's go. So let's get into this interview real quick, man, and then we're gonna come back and discuss how we feel. All right, let's go. So help us more about keeping in shape. You know, cause the, the bullshit ain't finna stop. The reason why I bring that up is because so, you know, though there was a recent interview. Uh, that Irv had done, yeah, where he had addressed some things, and uh, you know, didn't have the best, didn't didn't put you in the best light. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know how you know in the midst of everything productive that's going well, how do you handle things like that with your name being brought up in the media? And you know, how's how are you feeling about that? Is it well, affecting any of that that we just talked about? No, nah, not at all. The the thing that disturbed me the most about that was like page six was calling me and like different outlets were calling me to get a comment on it. And it was just, to me, it was like, this is that program. If like a black man says something about another black man, that's going to be press. And when he said it, that was like the next day. Because I had seen it on, like, you know, social media. Yeah. And, yeah, like, sure. you know, people send it to me, you know. I mean, everybody was talking about it. That's how I came across it. Yeah, because it was hilarious to me. Yeah. But, again, I was like, when when Page Six called, Page Six actually called me about this dumb shit. And I was like, well, you know, I just went to Harvard yesterday. Are you going to write about that? And then there was no, nothing more said. So I'm like, this is just a part of that program and that algorithm. You know, Irv is my brother, so sometimes I worry about his mental health. And, you know, I... I and you've hope- always said that, like, you, to, to keep it real, like, I'm glad you said it because I was going to ask you about that. Every time you've referred to Irv in private, it's been, hey, that's my little bro. That's my that's my brother. Even amongst all of this, where you could be saying some of the craziest shit, I'm sure because you guys have a history. I go back, you know what I mean, and y'all gone through shit that <laughs> bros go through. You know what I'm saying? But you've always kept it on a certain level. Like, yo, that's my bro. I don't know what this is. You know. Well, I'll let you say. It. Well, I can say this. Yes, Irv is my brother. They're all my brothers. Yeah. And it's like, it's funny, it depends on what time in their life that they're cool with me or when they're not. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Ir- Irv and I fundamental- fundamentally have always approached the music business a little different. Mm-hmm. You know, what I see him doing is celebrating taking his artist masters and selling them and saying, you know, this is how I make my money. And that's the furthest thing that, you know, I would ever do with any one of my artists. That's not my approach. See, for me, the problem with a creative is usually they can't make their vision come true because they don't have the money. So my thing is to keep a creative as economically empowered as possible. Cause you know what you get when you get a rich creative, you get a Kanye, mm. you get a Jay Z. So, you know, my artists generally end up being billionaires, 
because I'm not going to take their masters and say I'm going to sell them. Fact and a bar. (laughs) I'm not going to take their masters and then be like, yo, this is that, that, and that's sad to me because I know, or, you know, I don't understand that and I'm not going to get into that, but fundamentally that's where we've always been different. And I've always tried to beg Irv not to glamorize this gangster lifestyle in such a way, like, because it wasn't really ever for him. Almost when, when, when Jay called them Irv Gotti, it was like a joke. It wasn't meant to be taken serious because he's not a crime boss, never was. But he took it so serious and embraced it. Even with Preem, I would beg him, I'd be like, yo, Irv, please do not name your, 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 your label Murder, Inc. Because you're dealing with things, people that are still active. And you're making everybody hot. But he's always glamorized this, this style of being a gangster. Even when he was saying what he was saying, it was hilarious to me because... So you thought, so, so you think some of the problems, the legal problems came, he brought on himself? He completely, but you got to understand, he caught a charge. And, and again, I'm not talking his business, everybody yeah, knows. No, no, this is, he didn't do anything. Yeah. So when Irv came to me, what happened, and again, was like kind of like, I can't believe he's acting like this with me, mm-hmm. is... When he had the charge, he he came to me and said, yo, Dame, I'm fucked up, I'm broke. Because I can't, like when the feds, when, when they gave him the charge, yeah. the feds went to all the, the labels and said, if you work with him, we gonna make, it's gonna make you hot. Yeah. And even like Jay at the time was the president and you know, he came to me. And- that Rico, that's what that is. Mm-hmm. That's that Rico. Mm-hmm work mm-hmm. with somebody and they do something they start to implement everybody mm-hmm. you right about that i'm like jay won't even cut you a check he was like nah they everyone turned their back on me and i didn't have like money to give him but i was like irv you didn't do anything and these charges are not going to stick you don't have to worry about it taping but what i will do is i'll make your suits so i literally made that man suits so if you look at his uh when he went i was like alicia look good Huh, and what? I said, cover, oh. I was like, when, when, when you win and beat this, I don't want to, you know, me, I'm like, you're going to go right back to everybody that turned their back on you, you know? And he did. And that's cool. That's on him. But what I really was sad about was he was trying to like erase my history. <laughs> what do you think? Where, where does that stem from? I, like, either way, I, I don't know, but it's it's the play that everyone does. Like when you try to conquer a culture mm-hmm. or when you conquer a culture, the first thing you do is you erase their heroes, you erase their history, you take their religion, sure. you, you know? And it was like, damn, he's doing that classic play. So now you're taking your artist uh, masters, celebrating that, justifying it, even down to the way you carry the, you know, like where I'm from, you don't really talk about the things you do with women publicly. That's not considered something masculine. It's almost clown shit. So, you know, again, you take your masters, you talk about having, you know, with your artists and, and then justifying taking, you know, like something that, you know, justifying taking business from them because of something personal. Like that's not even like, you know, you have a fiduciary obligation to do what's in the best interest of the business, no matter what, that's an unwritten law. Right. I mean, so, of, so, so yeah. <clears throat> I just think fundamentally something changed because when we when he was our dj yes we definitely used to talk and plot because we'd be in airports but he wasn't a part of any rockefeller business other than you know you know when guys talking you'd be like oh let's do but we were always talking about freedom and independence and doing things the right way so to see him try to erase my history you know take his artist masters to talk about women and, and, and his relationships in that way it was just a different version and it was like that. All right, man. Um, I hope Dame Dash is all right because he looks kind of sick to me. So I just hope he's okay. Um, I always had respect for Dame Dash. I never really liked Dame Dash, but I always had respect for him. Like when I mean by like him, I just, I just, I don't know him personally. I just didn't like how he, you know, how he carried himself you know what I'm saying? That sometimes I felt like he did things and then he contradict things he did. But I don't like Irv Gotti at all. 100%. I never liked Irv Gotti. 
I always knew Irv Gotti was fake. Always. And I didn't like what he did with his artists. I didn't like that. I didn't like what he said about Ashanti. I didn't like that. You know what I'm saying? He's a certified clown. He's always been a clown. Everybody know Irv Gotti's a clown. You know what I'm saying? And he's one of those people that he'll punch you in your face and then he'll go sue you because he hurt his hand. That's the type of nigga Irv Gotti is. You know what I'm saying? He'll hit you and then sue you because his hand got hurt. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I agree with Dame Dash. He's always been doing some clown shit, though. And I think a lot of people in the industry, because at one point, Murder, Inc. was pretty big. You know what I'm saying? And I think that people in the industry, they respected that. You know what I'm saying? Murder, Inc. They respected Murder, Inc. He had hits coming out of there. You know what I'm saying? But record labels, record heads, a lot of them surround themselves with street dudes. So if you surround yourself with street dudes, then you're going to feel like you from the streets. You're going to feel like you 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 that guy. You know what I'm saying? Because you like, oh, I got a couple of shooters around me. It don't even matter. They'll take care of it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you talking? I got something for you. Like, type of nigga that snatched the gun out of another nigga hand, shoot him, and then give it back to him and be like, well, you take the charge. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You did it. It was me. I did it, but it was you that really did it. You know what I'm saying? That's the yeah. type of person Irv Gotti is. He's always been that way. He's always been a clown. You know what I'm saying? So I don't I, I don't I don't understand how people, you know, how people, you know, didn't recognize that. 50 Cent been telling y'all about uh Irv Gotti and Ja Rule. You know what I'm saying? But again, the hatred for 50 Cent elevated them. You know what I'm saying? But either way, man. Either way, man, I personally, it, just, it, it is what it is. But go ahead, bro. Yeah, for me, man, um, I look at it like this, you know. Um, with age, people mature, right? And um, they become, with, within that time frame, depending on where they at in life, you'll either see them become better people or you'll either see them take a downward spiral and become worse. Um, in this situation, you know, I see Dame Dash, you know, he's trying to be more of the mentor-like figure in Irv Gotti, you know what I mean? I, I don't, I mean, I know he had a health situation or whatever like that. And, um, I know he had some other things going on with him. It just seems like he's taking a downward spiral. You know what I mean? You know, just a lot of things going on around him and things like that. Uh, what I got to say is, man, um, you do become who you hang around. And, like, especially in the interview, I agree with uh, Dame Dash 110%. Like, you know, you know, just the stamping itself of what you're branding yourself to be can bring more attention onto you and make your situations either good for you or bad for you. You know what I mean? In his case, he had some crazy times that were dope, and then he had some times that was nutty too, you know? So it was like both both sides of the field, you know? Um that type of energy is never good for business. You know what I mean? You see with the, like you mentioned, the whole 50 cent beef. You know what I mean? Uh, I forgot what what incident that happened some time ago when, where the lights went off and somebody got somebody got shanked up or something like that. I, for, I forgot what, what exactly happened or who was involved, but I know there was an incident like that with them and stuff like, man, it, it's just you know it's poor for business when when you gotta when you gotta go through all those those obstacles that are unnecessary when all you really had to do was just put yourself around individuals that's going to elevate you you know what i mean but like i said man um when you're in the industry 
and you know you feel as if to be accepted you gotta become that energy so you start you know what i mean you start recruiting cats from the block like you'll come run with me you know what i mean you'll get money and you know who gonna say no Ain't nobody gonna say no they're gonna they're gonna want to be a part of that you know what i mean especially if irv Gotti tell him yo let's go be a part of that you know um like I said, man, uh, it, it was a very interesting interview, you know. Um, there's a lot of good points that Dane made, you know. It, it, you know, it just seems it just seems to me like, you know, we're in the era of uh, we're in the era if you damned if you do, damned if you don't. You know what I mean? And, you know, I, don't, I definitely don't agree with keeping a person's masters even after – they, they fulfilled their obligations, you know. I don't agree with that, not one bit, but, but hey, you know, you know what I mean? When you deal in the business, you know, you're going, you're going to deal with people, you know what I mean, do what they want to do. That's why you see so many artists nowadays, they, they become independent and they stay independent. You know what I mean? Like, there's no need for a record label unless you just want that stamp of approval as a name, but you don't need no record label. You could become your own record label, honestly. But, but hey, man, that's that's just my take on it, man. Uh, I hope Dame okay, too, because, you know what I mean, I've seen certain videos where, you know, he seemed like he's sick, but then I, I don't know. You know what I mean? I know a lot of these... A lot of these moguls, you know what I'm saying, they go on these different fasting diets and stuff like that. So, I don't know. Maybe he's on one of those. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. But... <laughs> hey, man, we out of here. Sketch Fed. See ya. Peace. Peace.